What's up boys and girls, ladies and gents, I'm Dennis, welcome back to Geek on Fleek, here again with another video. Why? Why? Because I'm a lonely geek with no friends, with a platform to talk about geeky stuff to people I don't know. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <gasps> so am I. That doesn't sound right, it's because Infinity War is on the way, where Purple Homer Simpson aka Thanos takes on the Avengers in a mega pack film, coming out on the 27th of April. I've been re-watching all MCU films from Phase 1 all the way to Phase 3, so I'm here to best equip you on this journey so you can get ready for the big one. To speed things up, because we only have a few days until the release, we're going to fly through this as best as we can, so I'm going to break down these videos into three sections, from Phase 1 all the way to Phase 3. So, MCU Phase 1 consists of Iron Man 1, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America the First Avenger, and finally Avengers 1, or Avengers Assemble. Each film will get an Infinity Stone rating out of 6 from me. Why 6 you ask? Well, because there are 6 Infinity Stones, guys. Duh. Oh, and you're a regular Rhodes Scholar. Where, where was it you graduated from again? Hmm? The University of Duh. So, let's get started. Iron Man, aka Tony Stark, made his comic book debut in Tales of Suspense, issue 39 in 1963. Pepper Potts made her debut in the same issue. We meet Agent Coulson from S.H.I.E.L.D., plus Rhodey teases to wearing the suit. Next time, baby. Long story short, eventually after saving the day, Tony reveals to the world that he is Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Tony basically at this point thinks he's the only superhero in the world. But boom, Marvel Studios teaches us never to walk out of a film early. I am Iron Man. You think you're the only superhero in the world? Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Fun fact, in Marvel's Ultimate Universe comics, they actually based their new Nick Fury on Samuel L. Jackson, which is pretty cool, right? He tells Tony about the Avengers Initiative. Well done, Marvel Studios. We love it. And just like that, we are hooked. I give this film a 4 out of 6 Infinity Stones. Next up, it's The Incredible Hulk, played by Edward Norton, who did a pretty good job. Hulk and Bruce Banner made their comic book debut in their own comic book, issue number 1 in 1962. Personally, I was a little bit unsure about this film, but I did enjoy some parts of it though. The film's adaptation comes predominantly from the Ultimate Universe comic series. Hulk is more of a creation of gamma radiation that exploded from a bomb, with a mix of an imbalanced or expired super soldier serum. What's that you ask? I'll explain later. Don't you worry. We thus meet Abomination, who's a familiar foe to the Hulk, as well as Bruce's girlfriend's dad, General Ross, who's a madman on a mission to try capture the Hulk. This film actually has no post credit scene, but we see Tony Stark walk through the doors of a pub to speak to General Ross about putting together a team. <gasps> What's this? Avengers, guys. Keep up. This film was a meh for me, so I give it a 2 out of 6 Infinity Stones. I'm not being harsh. Trust me. Next up, we go back to the genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Yes, that's you, Tony. Iron Man 2 starts off with the number one bad guy, Whiplash. Ooh, scary dude. Ivan Vanko, who actually didn't exist in the comics, is an original character for Iron Man 2. We also meet Justin Hammer from Hammer Tech. He's portrayed slightly different in the comics, in terms of his age and so on, but I think they nailed it in the movie. We also meet Black Widow for the first time. She made her debut in Tales of Suspense issue 52 in 1964. Tony goes through some challenges in this one, with his health, relationship with Pepper, and alcoholism, which is very true to the Iron Man comics. Rhodey finally gets a chance to don the suit, the Mark II, aka War Machine. Pay attention to Tony's new reactor and the little boy in the Iron Man helmet at the Stark Expo for future reference. Tony sits down with Nick Fury and is told that Iron Man is a yes for the Avengers, but Tony Stark is not. Hmm. That actually comes into play later though, but I'll explain that in a later video. We get a post credit scene, hooray! Agent Coulson is in New Mexico where something has just landed on Earth. I wonder what that is. Iron Man 2, classic, loved it. 4 out of 6 for me. Welcome to the party, Odin's son. Thor made his comic book debut in 1962 in Journey Into Mystery, issue 83. The most important characters we meet in this film are Mr. Mischief himself, Loki, who made his comic book debut in 1962, Journey Into Mystery, issue 85. He goes on his own special journey in this film too, but for the wrong reasons. One of my favorite Marvel villains for sure. We also meet Thor's mortal love interest Jane Foster and her colleague Dr. Selvig, who becomes an important figure in the future. Thor's father Odin, who needs no introduction. Come on guys, he's the king of Asgard, dude is crazy powerful. Thor's mother Frida, who taught Loki all of his magic tricks. 
Guess she regrets doing that now. Yikes. We meet the Warriors 3 and Lady Sif, who made her appearance in Journey into Mystery issue 102 in 1964. There's more from Agent Coulson and S.H.I.E.L.D. We get a tease of Mr. Hawkeye, but more about him later on. One of my favorite characters from Thor is the all-seeing gatekeeper, Heimdall, who controls the Bifrost and can see all the souls in the universe. In the post credit scene, we see Dr. Selvig meet with Nick Fury as he shows him something out of this world. I love the dive into the cosmic side of the Marvel Universe, but the delivery wasn't so great. I gave this film a 3 out of 6 rating. Next we meet Captain America, aka Steve Rogers. Cap made his debut in his very own comics in 1961. Nearly 1 million of these comics were sold. Now back in those days, that's a very impressive stat. The title The First Avenger isn't true to the comics, but if you think about it, it actually makes sense. The founding members of the Avengers though were Ant-Man, Wasp, Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor. But I really don't mind the way they changed it in the film. We are introduced to the bad guys, Hydra, who have been at war with S.H.I.E.L.D. for years. Now Hydra made their comic book debut in Strange Tales issue 135 in 1965. We meet Red Skull, who made his debut in Captain America Comics issue 7 in 1941, and he has always appeared with the Cosmic Cube aka the Tesseract. We see Tony's dad at the very first Stark Expo showing off the flying hover car, which in the comics S.H.I.E.L.D. agents use a lot. Now, remember previously we spoke about the Super Soldier Serum in the Incredible Hulk film. Now if you look again at the tanks General Ross found, the name on the tank says Dr. Reinstein aka Dr. Abraham Erskine. Yes, that's right, the inventor of the serum. Red Skull was his first patient, but it went wrong and ended up messing with the skin. Turned all red and stuff. Armand Zola makes an appearance here too. Crazy Hydra scientist who in the comic downloads his brain into a machine, which kind of follows suits in the Cap trilogy. But let me not get ahead of myself. I wonder if we'll see Nick Fury pop up again. You've been asleep, Cap. For almost 70 years. Post credit scene, amazing. And we got an Avengers trailer at the end of it. Now guys, if you're a geek like me, you definitely walked out of that cinema with a nosebleed. Love this film, even more after rewatching it. It gets a 5 out of 6 for me. We finally made it. Introducing The Avengers. As I mentioned earlier, the MCU guys don't do anything without reason, and if you thought the easter eggs and teasers were purely to get us to Avengers 1, you were so wrong. They had an even bigger card up their sleeve. Maestro, if you will. You question us. You question him. He who put the scepter in your hand, who gave you ancient knowledge and new purpose when you cast out. The first time I saw this film, I didn't really pay much attention to what was going on in the scene because I was just amazed that we were getting an Avengers film, period. But if you look closely, they're talking about a powerful being. You can kind of see a glimpse of him sitting on the throne. I mean, the guy doesn't turn around once, but if you are doing the rewatch like I did, pay attention to the scene more closely and see what I'm talking about. Moving on, we meet the Chitauri army who made their debut in Ultimate Comics issue 8 in 2002. We also meet Maria Hill who first appeared in New Avengers issue 4 in 2005. The film's storyline is roughly based on the Ultimate Comics that I mentioned earlier. In the comics, Nick Fury is the man that forms the Avengers, much like he does in this film. We see Hawkeye once again, who made his first appearance in Tales of Suspense issue 57 in 1964. In the film, Loki brainwashes Hawkeye into working for him. Hawkeye's first appearance in the comics was actually as a villain, similar to his role here, until he snaps out of it and rejoins the good guys. Now Loki's scepter has a major role in this film as you can see. We see the Tesseract's true powers as it opens up a door or portal between Earth and space for the Chitauri army to attack Earth. There's a lot of destruction that takes place in New York during this insane battle. Now, if you're like me, you always wonder who cleans this mess up at the end, but that comes back in a really cool way in the MCU. Remember I mentioned the A in Stark Tower looks very familiar. Now at the end of the battle, what's the only remaining letter on the building? Boom. Tease to the new Avengers Tower. We actually get to see the plans for this tower just before the credits. Speaking of credits, we are teased into a new chapter of the MCU. Much bigger than we ever expected. To challenge them is to court death. Avengers gets a 6 out of 6 for me. Like I know it wasn't perfect, but my word, after countless rewatches, it's still so good. And having all of those heroes on the screen at the same time, come on, what gets better than that? 
that's it for my phase one breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want some more in-depth stuff, you can check out another YouTube channel, which I spend way too much time on called New Rockstars. I highly recommend it if you want to dig deep into MCU Easter eggs, comic book references, and pop culture ties. This was a lot of fun and a lot of work, but I'll be back for phase two and phase three soon. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, peace, love, and happiness. It's been fun. I'll see you all very soon. Are you Tony Stank? Yes, this is, this is Tony Stank. You're in the right place. Thank you for that. Never dropping that, by the way. Table for one, Mr. Stank. Please, by the bathroom. <laughs>